it's lovely to be here. Um, I published this low tide pamphlet in October 2020 and this is the first time I've actually been able to read live from it. Um, so I'll begin with a poem that I was also due to read in April of the same year here after the Poets and Players competition, um, an event which was also cancelled. Little House. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Laura Ingalls, with your mousy braids and plain smocks, and your sister, Mary, who was prettier and told the Puritan line, you couldn't help but involve yourself in the entanglements of your late 19th century agrarian community in ways that produced perfect moral outcomes, like that time you pulled Nellie Olson in her Quaker vest by her blonde ringlets into the pond because she was too self-aggrandizing when deferring to her family's sweet shop come hardware store mercantile lifestyle. Laura Ingalls, I turned to the top shelf of my plywood wardrobe into your Midwestern attic bedroom and sneaked up matches to read my Bible by paraffin lamp made out of a used Nutella jar and tea light. I craved your wholesome life, so safe and contained. If only we could all skip around swinging pack lunches in tin pails, wearing starched cotton dresses with white aprons, everything in my eight-year-old life would be okay. Laura Ingalls, I spent Sunday afternoons fantasizing your father, Charles, would step out of the screen into my living room and pinch my cheek and call me half pint, his eyes meeting mine with all the twinkle of a man who can hitch a wagon and work a water mill by hand, who would always happen to be behind the next corner, the precise moment I needed a paternal figure to soak my shame into the metallic sweetness of his flannel shirt. Laura Ingalls, even now, I classify my personal timeline as life before Laura and life after Laura. Do you have any little house in the prairie fans? <laughs> um, so I was raised in Ireland in the 1980s uh, to an Irish um, dad and a German mother. But when I was three, they converted and became born again Christians and went on to become pastors of a Pentecostal church. Um, so on Sunday nights, we used to hire a function room in a local hotel uh, for guest speaker nights. So for the next poem, if you can imagine the Clonmel Arms Hotel circa 1990 and some locals in there having like a quiet pint and maybe a Sunday meal and then the, bur the doors are bursting open and a bunch of about 50 <laughs> people with guitars, tambourines, rainbow straps, uh, pianos and so on, traipsing through um, and imagine a little 10 year old girl in the midst of this mortified in case any of her school friends might be there and spot her. Daisy Chain. Four men form a circle around you. You have been plucked out. Praise the Lord, are you ready to receive him tonight? One shouts at you, eyes on the crowd. Presses a hand against your crushed velvet hairband. Throws a nod to the pianist by the flip chart. This is holy ground. We're standing. cross-dressing great uncle, a demon of rejection from your mother's side, a Jezebel stronghold now manifesting through your silence. He will forgive you, he will forgive you not. They are waiting for you to fall. You feel a wobble in the balls of your feet, 
a slight sway in your left thigh. Touch her, Lord, one says. Move in her, have your way, says another. The man with the mic tells the crowd, this is as natural as breathing. They must remember Jesus is fully in control. That spirits often leave with a cough or a yawn. You are afraid to open your eyes. You pierce your thumbnails into the little fists in your pockets for balance. The catcher with the bald head lunges from behind, hands at your armpits, next to the lady with the modesty blanket, ready to cover your knee-high socks when you hit the linoleum floor. Um, my mum was eventually diagnosed with a brain tumour, um, but her belief remains strong right till the end and in the last week when I flew over um, I overheard somebody asking her how her faith was and although she could still hardly speak at that point I remember her chin lifting up and she just said intact um, so I shall read these two poems um, dedicated to my mum Mutter's Prache my mother was never waiting for my father, but on him. I had to sit on the table and never at. I ate schnitzel with flowering potatoes, mashed with vinegar and oil. Wore matching dirndls with my sister on Sundays. Some days she would bundle us in the orange fiat to St. Patrick's Well, send us in to rob the, co the coins between the moss, Superstition is witchcraft, she would tell us, and afterwards we would buy 99s from the van and count the Catholics on their way to burn. V's were W's and W's were V's, and she would take me to violin lessons in the village and vape while I practiced. Practice reels and jigs and hornpipes. Practice being normal and Irish. Once. She picked up two hitchers with us three in the back. I had to sit on a lap. We stopped for chips and said grace over our greasy cartons while Mam sped through the second coming with a 1970s cartoon Bible tract. We spent the last Christmas waiting by my mother. I watched my sister lift and turn with all the right positions. I was not like her. All I could do was pick small bits of lake cooking and place them on Mam's lips. Lecker, she said, delicious. And I'll finish with this one, it's called Low Tide. That summer, the sea spread her white arms across the bay, dragged back the whelks, the driftwood, the lobster traps, the nylon mesh, wiped the spray from the tops of the children's heads, left them naked on the shore. They sat there with vacant eyes, shoveling fistfuls of sand into their dry mouths. One day you'll thank me, she told them, crawling backwards, scraping her, leg, her knees across the rocky bed. Shh. Shush, the oldest one said, as she grew smaller and smaller, a pencil blue line, so static you could balance a glass marble on her. The children walked for days to get her back. It was hard to see where the sky ended and their blue mother began, so thin, flat and lifeless on the edge of their world. Nothing else but sand for miles. The younger ones crying because their feet were so hot. When will mother stand up? Is she sleeping? Mother, when you left, I couldn't find the word for dead. Every time I closed my eyes to focus, all I could see were coral bones ebbing further away without touching. You moved with such harmony, I thought to not be alive must be a beautiful thing.